on to our first thing. What is an atom? I have already told you that for this chapter we are assuming that atom is an indivisible particle. Let me give you an example for an atom. You must have seen a building and when the building was constructed they used a brick to construct such a tall and a heavy building. That brick represents the atom of that building. The very basic structure for the basic thing that makes up that building is the brick and the brick represents an atom. Atoms are of very 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 small size. They are small beyond our imagination. And for repre re representing such small such small masses and diameters, we use units such as nanometers. Like the diameter, one nanometer is equal to one upon meter. One nanometer is equal to one upon ten minus nine nanometer. And one meter is equal to ten raised to power nine nanometer. So you see how small are the atoms. Now let us continue our journey on exploring atoms. I've just told you about the size of the atom. Now let us concentrate on how these atoms are represented and how John Dalton thought about representing these atoms. Dalton represented these atoms in form of symbols. Symbols for every element, like for sulfur, he had such a symbol. This represented sulfur, chlorine, gold, and many other. My friends, you might also be finding it difficult to learn these symbols and write them in exams and also discover on these symbols. So, the modern day symbols were given by another scientist whose name was Cyprus. modern day symbols such as C, L, A, R, etc. Now you might be wondering why I have written one little capital and when one letter small. This is the rule for writing an element's name. One letter should be of capital and the other letter would be of small. And whenever we are writing about an element, we we take the first two letters of either its Latin name or its English name, depending upon the availability of that name. Now my friends, I have explained to you how to represent an atom. Now you might be wondering, I told you about the diameter sort thing and uh, its radius. Now I'm going to tell you how to represent an atom in mass. You might be thinking, it is a, it, for your information I want to tell you, it is on NCRT page number 34. Now you might be thinking that why should we, why should we be concerned the, with the mass of such a small irrelevant thing. But no my friends, it is a very relevant thing. And it combines in large number to form big big things, big big compounds and even molecules which you are going to take up further. First let me explain you atomic mass which is now, which was earlier known as atomic mass but now is now known as unified mass. For this let me give you an example. One day, uh, <coughs> 
one day um, a pers a fruit seller had uh, did not have his weights for taking up the fruits for um, taking the weight of the fruits so what he did was cut his what he had the weight of one of his watermelons so what he did was that he cut his watermelon into six equal pieces and then he weighed other fruits according to those weights one of the watermelon slice was equals to 1 fmu or one fruit mass unit let's say and he took it according to that one fmu if the fmu was heavier then it would be 2 or 3 fmu this is how he took the mass a clever person indeed this is how the scientists started discovering initially they took oxygen as their guiding point for taking the other top, for for taking the mass of the other atoms but later it was said that carbon c12 is a better option and it is equals to carbon c12 is equals to 12 amu so 1 amu is equals so uh, anything whose mass if we want to calculate it, our 1 amu would be equal to carbon c12 carbon c12 mass that is 12 amu that is its mass if we want to calculate 1 amu according to the unitary method so the relative mass of an atom with the respect to carbon c12 atom is called is, is called its atomic mass or the unified mass as we say now my friends i have explained you what is an atomic mass now you might be wondering i told you in between what is a molecule or something like that so now we are going to take up the topic how do atoms exist you see atoms cannot exist independently they need to form molecules to exist there are two types of molecules one is the molecule of an element and one is the molecule of a compound so first we are going to discuss the molecule of an element as an atom cannot exist independently that would combine with one or some more amount of atoms to form a molecule to exist independently and be stable some examples of the molecules are o2 that is the molecule of oxygen and po4 phosphorus so this is how molecules are formed of elements but what is atomicity comes inside it the number of atoms constituting in a molecule are its atomicity for example oxygen is diatomic that means two atoms of oxygen combine to form an atom molecule that is its atomicity is 2 or diatomic 